Okay, so for today, I wanted to walk through not uh, a specific workflow or tutorial, but a plugin that I just discovered this month and have been playing with a little bit. It's kind of cool. Um, haven't fully worked it into my workflow, but I wanted to give a rundown and make an introduction to it because I think it's pretty useful and has a lot of potential. The plugin itself is called Auto Layout. Um, this is the site, it's pretty basic. If you've never installed um, a plugin into Sketch, it's pretty easy. You just simply download it, go to that file, double click, it'll unpack it, and double click this .sketch plugin file. Um, all you gotta do is hit replace or log in. I never got it installed, so it's asking me to replace it. Basically, just double click and it will install. Um, once you open Sketch, you will notice uh, this plugins menu here where uh, you can see auto layout right here. Um, you can kind of and show and hide this panel. Um, I'm going to show right now. It's this down here. Um, you can see when you click on it, um, if you open this up, you get this nice panel of different options and we'll kind of dig in to see what you can do here. What we're looking at in my sketch file is kind of this um, fun project that I, an idea that I had. Um, it's a simple web app that I want, I still want to create, just haven't had it built yet. Um, but essentially, I found these SVG camo patterns. There's like five or six of them. I thought it would be cool to take um, these SVG patterns and design an interface that allows you to change the colors within the pattern and then allow you to download that and implement wherever you want on the web. So I designed a simple kind of fun UI for this. Uh, and when I did so, I started on desktop, like a, a small 1280 width, and then also created um, an iPhone 7 view. Once I designed this, I realized, and I'll show a time lapse right now, um, that it didn't work on a smaller phone sizes. So here I have a phone, um, iPhone SE. And I had to redesign um, some of the layout and change some things in order for this UI to work. I think this is a common thing people do. It's why it's best to start on the smallest screen so you don't get caught in this trap. Um, I still do it. I did this and it only took me like 10 minutes to make this smaller phone size and then also lay this out in landscape. Um, most of us do this if you're designing for multiple screens. Um, it's really not that big of a pain and you can do it pretty quickly, but Auto Layout is this plugin that makes this exploration quite a bit easier. So I'm gonna run through kind of how I would do these extra screens and um, explore this layout with Auto Layout compared to what I did in the time lapse I just showed you. So I'm gonna duplicate this page, I'm just gonna call it Home Auto Layout. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, for this sake, I'm going to delete these screens. And I'm gonna move this one down here just for example. So what you can do is basically you can select any element on the screen and provide specific um, snapping uh, attributes to it. So you can say snap left, snap right, um, snap horizontal or vertical um, as far as the center, center horizontal, center vertical. Um, and when this actual artboard changes size, uh, those elements um, stick to the orientation on that canvas. So I'm going to jump into this iPhone 7 view. Um, just another note, I like to group things like almost too much. And if you use a group, I'll show you right here. Um, I'm going to take this group and over here in the, in the panel you can see that you can pin to the top, you can pin to the bottom, left, or right um, through these little dots. And when I do that you'll see uh, that it enters, enters the actual value that you have depending on the coordinates in your, in your thing. So if I move this down you'll see that that changes as well. Um, you can move it this way as well. But if I just say I want this pin to the top and I want it centered, this is a horizontal center and a vertical center. When I move this, it's going to uh, not scale that whole background because it's a group and also um, it's taking the icons and everything else with it. So I'm gonna ungroup this for the sake of, of this um, demo. I don't know how I would actually structure my files if I couldn't group everything because it makes things quite unorganized. Um, but for the sake of the demo, I'm not gonna worry about that. So I'm gonna select the background. I'm gonna make it anchor top, left and right. Um, I could put center, but it doesn't really matter. I want this to stretch. So now that I've done that, you'll see that that whole top app bar now scales um, with the width. And as I go vertically, it doesn't shrink. It just stays pinned as its original height. Super cool, right? 
Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this logo and I want that to um, stay centered. Um, so I'm going to pin to the top and also center here. What that's going to do is keep it centered across the overall width. Once again, it doesn't scale when I change the vertical height of the canvas. Likewise, I'm going to take these icons. I'm going to pin this one left and top and this one right and top. And this should allow those to scale as well. So as you can see, this is, is pretty cool. You can start to take some global elements and pin them to the orientation as it relates to the screen. So now I have this bottom UI, which I'm calling the hex UI. This essentially is like simple tap spots to be able to um, open this view where you could actually enter and change the hex value um, of the four colors in the pattern. So for this guy, I'm going to make it pin to the bottom because I want to maintain this bottom margin. Um, and I'm just going to center it horizontally so we can see what happens. So um, when I do that, obviously this background stays that same size. Um, I'd imagine that I would actually relay out this UI to a horizontal um, layout, kind of like I had in um, this landscape view. Um, this tool isn't that sophisticated. Um, so for this sake, what I'm going to do is keep it like this because I really don't want this box to scale like the header does. I think this is, is a better solution. Okay, so now that I have this done with the um, iPhone, I'm going to jump over here and do it with uh, the desktop as well just for um, being thorough. So once again, I'm going to ungroup this navigation because I want these elements to persist differently. Uh, here, I'm going to fix to the top um, both icons. And in this layout, I kind of have this like vertical margin of not letting the things go all the way to the left or right. So I'm also going to fix these to the left and right so that stays consistent. Um, and then I'm going to center and top align the logo and then full left, right, and top the nav bar. This bottom UI, I'm going to center and bottom align that. Now when I move this web UI, it should scale appropriately. Yeah, see, so that's, that's essentially what I'm going for. Um, you can see on big screens what this looks like, on small screens what this looks like. Um, it's obviously not a perfect tool and it, it doesn't have too many like conditional statements that you can write, but it gets the job done. So at the top of the plugin, you have some other options which are kind of cool. Um, one is this like grid icon which allows you to just kind of organize your artboards and just kind of organize everything. That's kind of nice, um, so let me show you that again. If I just move these things around and I hit, boom, it's just gonna auto layout. I'm not sure how it's organizing these. I haven't looked into it too much. Okay, so on the right-hand side here, like I showed in the time-lapse, you can obviously do this by yourself. You can create different artboards at different sizes and copy-paste your artwork and scale it across the different screen sizes. The nice thing uh, that auto layout does is it does that for you. Um, you'll notice this bar on the right and it has these different uh, screen sizes based on platform. So here we're in a web platform and we're seeing desktop HD, desktop tablet, portrait, mobile portrait. If I go into the iPhone, um, it's going to show the same thing. So you can switch the platform to like iOS, it's going to give me iOS screens. But unfortunately, when you do that, it does that kind of across all your artboards. So for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna keep it in iOS so we can just look at the phone screens because that's what I'm most concerned about. When you do that um, and you have platform, you can also click this guy, which is gonna give you different orientations of the artboard, which is really nice. And so I can toggle and see landscape portrait, how this works and making sure things um, don't cause any problems. I can toggle between these screen sizes and start to see what my, um, what my UI looks like depending on the screen size. The really cool thing is that you can hit generate overview and it's going to work. What it's gonna do is gonna create a new file with all these artboard sizes and your artwork with the auto layout parameters applied to it. So if you look here, this I designed this at iPhone 7. This is what it looks like here. As it goes down, I can obviously see that this hex UI needs some work and doesn't maintain based on the parameters I gave it. Also, the um, app bar gets really heavy on a, like an iPhone 4S. Uh, but as it scales up to you know um, iPad Air and iPad Pro, it hypothetically works. So and you'll notice that like it it also does the landscape views 
and it does it with the other artboards, which I didn't, I didn't flush out because of this weird um, keyboard UI. But it's pretty cool, it, it works. What I'm gonna do just for the sake of showing that I know what I'm doing, I'm gonna go back to my original file. I'm gonna create a new artboard with just this small guy. Because this is the iPhone SE, which is like the smallest, or one of the smallest phones. And I'm gonna set up these parameters the same way I did on the other ones and we'll see if we can generate a better overview of all these screens. So this is left and top. This one's right and top. This one's top, left, right. This one is top and center. This one, bottom, center. And I never even did the border. The border should be, okay, the border I already did. It's top, top left, right, and bottom. So now that I have this, I should be able to toggle these. Boom, boom, that works. Toggle seven, seven plus. Okay, this is working. I think the 4S will break. Oh, 4S works too, cool. So now that I have this, what I'm going to do is hit the generate. Let's see if this works better. Generate overview. There, so that works. Um, oh no, Sketch, come on. Side note, with Sketch plugins, sometimes things crash. Um, this one just crashed. Um, it's only happened to me twice. The good thing is Sketch is good at saving, so this hopefully shouldn't be too much of a problem. But you saw, it worked. The last thing I'm going to do is I wanna um, show you guys this works with more than just UI. I have here just kind of like a simple about page uh, of like what this thing is. And this will work. I'm actually gonna copy, I wonder if this copy and paste. So these things all have attributes. If I copy and paste this here. Yeah, they stay. Cool. So when you have an attribute and you copy and paste it across artboards, it stays. Also, I'm gonna take this background and I'm going to pin it um, left, right, bottom, top. And this text, I want left pinned, top pinned, right pinned. And this text, top pin, left pin, right pin. What I think this is going to do is scale the text so the text actually flows um, across the different artboards. And so this works with the body copy and things within your UI. Yeah, see? See, that's pretty dope. Usually that takes a lot of time to do manually. Um, and this just kind of works and does it. Just for the sake of trying to break things, let's try and generate this one one more time and see what it gives us. Come on, don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break. Boom, there you go. So once again, it took that about page that I had with the parameters we gave it, and it you know kept the margin of the text, the navigation um, scaled, and so did the background scrim. So once again, a fun little tool. I encourage you guys to go check it out. Um, their domain is animaapp.github.io. Um, thank you, Anima, for making cool products and making them free. Check it out, and if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. Like this if you made it to the end, and uh, look forward to making more of these videos for you guys. Thank you.